I'm David Bao, and this video is for the paper Rewriting a Deep Generative Model. In 1870, in Decatur County, Indiana, a very strange sight appeared on the top of a courthouse tower. An aspen tree had sprouted there. The tree's been up there ever since. It's beautiful, and the people of Decatur County love it. It's totally one of a kind. And that makes me think, can we make a generative model to make tree tower images like this? Because there is no big data set of trees on towers. How can we make a generative model without a data set? The problem of making something totally unique comes up all the time. For example, an image editor takes an image's input and can synthesize a new image with any effect I want. I could use it to draw a tree on top of a tower, but that only changes one image. In our paper, we do something different. We show how to edit a model instead of an image. As input, we take a deep generative model, G of Z, that starts with weights W0, the pre-trained G, maps a random input vector z to a realistic image. Then, as output, we produce a changed model with weights w1. Since the model makes an infinite set of images, changing the rules of the model lets us create an infinite set of changed images that follow new rules. For example, this lets us have trees on all the towers. To edit a model, we created a user interface with three parts, an image viewer, a rule selector, and a goal selector. The image viewer shows a sample of synthesized images from the model. Here we're looking at a StyleGAN V2 trained on Elson churches. To change the model, we begin with rule selection. We choose which rule of the model to change by picking examples of similar contexts. I've chosen a few towers. Clicking on this button reveals other images that are affected by the same rule. This rule determines how to draw pointy towers. The next phase is to specify how to change the rule. We let the user do this by copy and paste. By copying a tree from one image and pasting it into another, we're not just editing one image. We're giving the system an example of how the rule needs to change. When I click the Execute button, an optimization takes about 8 seconds to calculate a generalized change in this one rule. After the model's changed, all the pointy towers have turned into trees. This change is not just done in one image, but in all the similar towers. And notice, we've just changed one rule. Regions that are unrelated to the rule remain unchanged. Our change is generalized to an infinite set of images, but it's also specific to the rule that we specified. We can even rewrite the same rule in different ways by changing the goal. If I copy and paste a dome instead of a tree, then the pointy towers rule becomes a rule to draw domes now instead of pointy towers or trees. Let's take a minute to edit some other models using our tool. This next one is a StyleGAN V2 trained on FFHQ faces. Many of the faces are frowning. The model has a rule for drawing a frown that we can change. To select the rule, we select a few images of faces that are not smiling. Then to change the rule, we copy and paste a single smile example. Executing the change makes all the faces smile instead. Notice how the smiles are appropriate to each face. Of course, smiling faces are familiar. The real power of the method is we can create images that have never been seen before. For example, notice how kids have eyebrows that don't have much hair. We can change this by changing the rule for kids' eyebrows. We use the tool to select a few different eyebrows. Here I pick a few different kids, which, by the way, these are all synthesized images. They're not real kids even though they look very realistic. Then to change the rule for kids' eyebrows, we'll copy and paste this bushy mustache to use as an example. After the change is executed, all the kids have very bushy eyebrows. Since we do not have a data set of kids that look like this, ordinary training wouldn't have been an option. Next example, this is a StyleGAN V2 model of horses. Some of the horses have riders, and some of the riders have hats, but you might notice none of the horses have hats. And that's something that we can change. Again, I'll find a rule to change for the tops of horses' heads. I'll choose a few examples to get some diversity. And then we can paste one hat onto one horse. After I click Execute, the horses now have hats. My last example is a short demonstration of changing a model of a physical rule instead of an object. 
We start with the Progressive GAN Trainedine Kitchens. One of the remarkable things about the model is that it seems to approximately model the reflected light in the scene. When there's a window, light gets reflected off of countertops. When there are no windows, there are no reflections. Here we can ask, can this rule for light be changed? We want to know, can we eliminate reflections when there are windows, or can we create reflections without windows? It turns out, yes, we can. And here's what it looks like. Again, at the left is a scene with windows, but notice, now there are not many reflections. And at the right, without windows, there are actually more reflections. This effect happens in all scenes. Here's another one. First, an unmodified model, showing reflections as usual. Then, in the changed model, the reflections are reversed. The interesting thing here is that the new model differs from the old one in just one rule change, what we call a rank one change in the weights of a layer. Here's how our method works. Our method for rewriting a rule is based on the hypothesis that each layer of a deep network acts as an optimal linear associative memory. The weights of a layer store a map associating keys that encode meaningful context with values that determine output. What is an optimal linear associative memory? It means that the weights of the layer are an optimal solution for memorizing a given set of key value associations with minimal error. In other words, the weights are the solution to some least squares problem of this form. Since one layer stores many rules, to rewrite a model, we have to modify the weights to change one specific example while minimizing interference with all the other memories that the layer had to store. This is a constrained least squares problem with a solution in this form. Combining both observations reveals that the ideal update has a very simple form. The change is a rank one update in the weights. In detail, this update is a product of two vectors. On the right is a vector C inverse little k, where C is the covariance matrix over all existing keys. This vector is invariant to the value being written, and it determines the direction of each row of the update. The lambda on the left determines the magnitude of each row in the update, and only lambda depends on the value of v being written. The details of lambda are expanded in the paper. This means that the memory has a slot for the rule that can be updated by changing the weights in one specific direction that doesn't depend on v. So here's our method. First, we calculate the ideal update direction d. It depends on the key that we want to change, and not the value. This is done in the UI by the rule selector. Second, we ask the user to give a copy-paste example to set a key value pair as the goal. Finally, we calculate an update that optimizes the goal while remaining constrained to the update direction D. This simple method allows a rule to be completely changed while still avoiding changes in unrelated rules in the model. It allows us to change one specific thing at a time, and it provides some insight into how rules are organized within a generative model. If we want to make more changes when rewriting a model, we can apply successive changes. Our work is inspired by previous research from several different communities. Active learning and interactive learning are methods to improve model training through human interaction. And transfer methods, such as pre-training, domain adaptation, and zero-shot learning, work to adjust models according to new datasets. These machine learning approaches focus on modeling a dataset rather than expressing a user's intention. On the other hand, there's a body of work in vision and graphics that enables creative goals imagined by human users. For example, deep image synthesis and editing enables users to draw or make gestures to make realistic images, and edit propagation methods focus on propagating a user's edits of one object to other images that contain the same object. But these editing methods focus on modifying images rather than generative models. Our work alters models, not individual images, and we also drive the changes using user intentions rather than big data sets. By drawing inspiration from both fields, we've shown that it's feasible for users to directly edit a large model. You can find more examples, comparisons, and measurements in our paper, and source code and demos are on our website. Please check it out, and thank you.